Last month, I blood tested for the fourth time in 2025. And note that this is test number 61 since 2015. So with that in mind, what's my biological age? That's what we'll see here. This is using Dr. Morgan Levine's biological age calculator, PhenoAge. And if you have blood test data and you want to measure your own PhenoAge using this test, there's a downloadable Excel file in a link from my website in the video's description. No email required. So when I enter these data, I get a biological age for this test of 35 years, which is 17.4 years younger than my chronological. Now, a question I often get at this point in the video is, how good is this test? And if you missed that video, I'll link to it in the right corner. But even without seeing that video, note that this clock, and this isn't an epigenetic test, not that all epigenetic tests are bad, they're not. Some are much better than others. This is a clock based on actual clinical chemistry biomarkers that represent many organ systems, including albumin and alkaline phosphatase, so liver health and, and or function, kidney function, creatinine, glucose, metabolic health, HSCRP, inflammation, lymphocyte percentage, and white blood cells, so immune, immune cells, and then two measures of red blood cell related measures, the MCV and RDW. All right, so note that I mentioned this is test number 61 since 2015. So why test so often? So I see a lot of talk online about pace of aging and biological age using maybe one test or, for example, the Rejuvenation Olympics is just three tests in two years to get onto the leaderboard. Now, is three tests over a 730-day period really representative of an aging rate? I'd argue that's not enough. And for that, we would need data, a lot more data. And along those lines, one can make the argument that even 61 tests over about 10 years is not enough data. Having data every day would be the ideal, right? Then we can really track aging rate by looking at the collective sum, 365 days of data. Nonetheless, I'd posit that having an average of at least six tests per year will be better than one or two tests per year. So with that in mind, for more context, rather than this, this just one test, this one test in May, let's take a look at all biological age results since 2018, as I have 41 tests over that period, as shown here. So this is year-to-year -year change for biological age, again, using PhenoAge, for 41 tests from 2018 to 2025. Now, when I first started tracking, I wasn't measuring HSCRP at every test, and that was in 2018 to 2019. So I only had three tests over that two-year period. Average, biologi bi sorry, average biological age was 34.3 years. And then, just like Neo in The Matrix, when he says, guns, I need lots of guns, I had the same idea, only for data. In 2020, I thought, I need data, lots of data. So I started testing more often. Six times each in 2020 and 2021, and the average biological age in both of those years was exactly 33.9 years. So we can see that maybe the three tests in 2018 to 2019, around 34, is similar you know, to the much, many more tests, 12 tests over a two year span in 2020, 2021. But I wouldn't, bet, I wouldn't bet the house that three tests is represented, three tests over two years is representative of full year averages relative to 12 tests. I'd rather have the data for 12 tests. But so the data happens to match in this situation, 34 versus around 34. In 2022, I had my best year to date with an average biological age of 32.1 years. And note that this was now over seven tests. I increased the testing frequency. Over seven tests again in 2023, average biological age got a bit worse to 32.9, moving a bit in the wrong direction too, but now over eight tests in 2024, 33.1, it's hard to see, it's uh, covered by the black dots. And then after the first four tests in 2025, average biological age is currently 32.7 years, so a bit better than last year and the year before that, but still not as good as 2022. Now, it's important to note uh, consistency, right? So we want our data to be consistent from test to test. So for this test, it was exactly 17.4 years younger than the previous test. Now, you could say, well, what about the two tests before that? It's not as good as the two tests before that. That's where the year-to-year -year average comes in. So collectively, 32.7 uh, years as a four-test average is still pretty good relative to, to the past two years, albeit not as good as 2022. At a minimum, note that I've resisted the age-related increase for biological age, which is good news. And it's good news because even if all biomarkers stay the same using this clock, and you can try this out for yourself if you have, if you've downloaded that Excel file from the link from my website, phenoage increases by 0.9 years per year, even if all biomarkers stay the same. 
So with that, my expected biological age should be higher than where it is now, not slightly lower than where I started in 2018, 2019. So that indicates that I've improved biomarkers. I've resisted age-related change. I'm not going to say age reversal. This is a nonsense thing. You know, I haven't reversed my age. I can't undo the first 50 years of, of life. But what I can do is slow aging rate, which can potentially flatten my mortality risk and would give me my best odds of living as long as possible, as healthily as possible. Now, there's a lot more to this story. This is just part one. And in part two, we're going to take a look at the full blood test report. Note that anybody can enter data into a spreadsheet, right? So I prefer to show all of the data, all of the things that I measure, because I measure a lot more things than just the nine biomarkers that are on PhenoAge. PhenoAge has blind spots. It's not a perfect test. All tests have blind spots. So I'm measuring a lot other biomarkers too, trying to cover as many blind spots as possible. And then in the third part of this video series, we'll take a look at diet, supplements, and prescription meds to see what might be contributing to this 17.4 year younger biological age. If you've ever wondered what's optimal for biomarkers, well, I have a new Patreon tier dedicated just to that. It currently includes 33, the 33 biomarkers shown here. And this isn't the reference ranges. Anybody can get that from an LM these days. It's what may be optimal based on how each of these biomarkers changes during aging and or their association with all-cause mortality risk. It currently includes more than two hours of video content from 48 published references, and all of the references are linked under that video. So if you're interested in that, check it out. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon, where I, offer, where I show biomarker correlations, not just for DAGs with niacin and diet, but then Correlations for everything with all other biomarkers, stuff on the clinical chemistries, uh, stuff from epigenetics. I post correlations, resting heart rate, heart rate variability. So correlations for lots of stuff are posted there. I've also got four other tiers, which I post regularly. So if you're interested in that, check it out. We've also got discount and affiliate links that you can use to test yourself that help support the channel. And note that any of these discount and affiliate links that are here, I'm either currently using or have recently used. I would never have something on the channel that I'm not actively using or have recently used that I believe in or that I don't believe in. And those include ultalabtest.com, which is where I get the majority of my blood tests performed, the clearly filtered water filter, which I'm using every day, at-home metabolomics covered in the video, or microbiome composition. And I just sent the sample for analysis, so we'll see how that plays out. NAD testing with Ginfinity, epigenetic testing, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes that epigenetic test Grimage, green tea, which I drink every day, diet tracking with chronometer, also using that every day. Or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, new merch, including the figuring stuff out as my drug, which I've got on here. And we've got the channel theme. So if you're interested in these designs, there's a link in the video's description. Thanks for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.